This video is going to show you a solo flawless whisper mission on legend difficulty for those that just want to see that and skip to the timestamps. So for the legend mission, a few things about it. The modifiers, before I get into that though, make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already for more stuff like this. So the modifiers for legend are epitaph, void fret, on the clock, overcharged sniper rifle. I don't know if these modifiers are going to rotate weekly. I assume they probably will, right? But I don't know. Anyways, the timer for Legend is 20 minutes. The normal version is 40 minutes. Void Fret is on. Overcharged Sniper, so those things that we can consider. Um, now then, it's an 1830 power level mission, right? Whereas normal is 1800. However, no matter what your power level is, you are always uh, up against sordid enemies. So, I have a suspicion that there's an extra modifier on the Legend Whisper, similar to the Exotic Rotator playlist, which states here. Maximum effective level 1815. I think that there's a legend modifier on the whisper. It's just not up there because equipment lock because lock loadout's not on. But max, maximum effective level I think is on for the whisper mission at 1815, which would tally up with the ads being swords. I don't think it's minus 25 delta, but I would say it's minus 15. Uh, the 1850, 1815. So that's just a comment about that. The builds that we use. There's the three different builds. Right, but the fragments and aspects were the same on every one, just that there was different exotics used. So we used Daybreak, Heal and Rift, Celestial Fire, Heal and Grenade, aspects are Icarus Dash, Touch of Flame, Empyrean, Torches, Ashes, Solace. Right, now there's three different exotics that we used armor wise and two different exotic weapons that we used. So we start off with this build, Karnstein Armors mainly for the first bit, with Sunshot, Blind and Nades, Auto Load and Holster. And, uh, stasis GL fixed odds Kaisers through this with uh, enhanced field prep in incandescent with a taken spec in there. Make sure you run taken spec, it's a larger buff than what boss minor and major is. That's what we run, and then for DPS situations, we swap over to Polaris Lance. Everything's the same apart from Dawn Chorus is on to enhance our daybreak super. And then there's also occasions where we use. The stag with Polaris Lance. And you're going to see in the run why it's actually useful. And I did find it that way. And we use three different builds. There is no equipment locked on. Uh, so we're okay that way. Right? So we can swap between all these. Um, literally, that's the information on the builds anyways. So now we're on Legend Mode, which is now a significant step up in terms of difficulty. As opposed to the normal solo i just done. A few hours ago that was just done to showcase uh for newer players how that is if people are now accustomed to the whisper if you're accustomed to whisper then now you can jump in on your legend and go for your legend solo flawless and it's overall i would say it's not as difficult as the original variant because of the sandbox that we're in more on that in a bit so the jump puzzle right now um There'll be, I presume there'll be some skates, there'll be some skips, jump skips. This video doesn't have any of that in at the minute. I know that you can tighten sword fly the entire jump puzzle. We used to do that back in the day and it looks that you'll still be able to do that. So I'm looking forward to doing a tight run and doing that and showcasing. In actual fact, I'm going to do all three subclass Solo Flawless Whisper Legends uh, videos, right? Now, I don't know if I'm going to do some more normal runs um let me know if you want normal i don't think you do i think you want legend don't you you want legend all three classes because the normal there's nothing at stake on the normal if you die you can respawn it's a 40 minute timer there's no urgency with this run there's urgency because it's 20 minutes the same as the original rotation however there's one extra big boss as opposed to what there was. But we're in a completely different sandbox compared to what we had then. So I still think the old double primary one is more difficult than this. By quite a, a long way. But it's sort of kind of difficult. But we have a lot of stuff going for us this season with the solar. Now this is a solar run. I'm going to do a non-solar run as well. On, on classes. There's, there's going to be... There's going to be times when I'm going to jump off this. This is just the first. Solar floor is clear. We're not going too mad. We're just showing you the meta loadout to run for this, which is going to be probably one of the best setups. So, 
pretty straightforward so far with the jumps. I mean, I don't need to give too much advice on the jumps because I just literally made a video about this just before this, explaining the jumps. Um, as I say, if, if you've never done this, then you're going to find it really difficult your first time. But if you're accustomed to Whisper, then you know the jumps. There's nothing changed in terms of that. The chests have changed and all that sort of stuff. The secrets are different. I'm aware of that. But in terms of like physically getting to the first encounter, th there's no changes there. So muscle memory kicks in for me. I remember the jumps, even though it was that long ago. I still remember exactly when to cancel jump, when to activate jump, when to uh, avoid from falling off map, all that sort of stuff. The exit is obviously at back right if you didn't see the prior video. Which, that's where we're going now. Um, we could have yet ran an Eager Edge Sword and then swapped. The problem with that is this. If you do that, you're going to half your heavy ammo. So you can Eager Edge a jump puzzle, but when you get to the fight, you want a good heavy weapon on. And Eager Edge Sword is not going to cut it, right? Unless you're on a particular build like Strand Titan, then it will. So... For this build, you want a decent heavy, so I chose not to run a sword at the start at all because it would cut your heavy in half when you get to combat, and you want plenty of heavy. You are ha you need to run quickly through these encounters. Now, fixed odds comes back in rotation. How good of this? How good of a machine gun has this been to us this season? Well, it's gonna get even better because it's fantastic for this mission. Because of the rule, enhanced field rep, enhanced incandescent, you can literally spam the machine gun as a primary. I get people talking to me all the time saying, "Put feed frenzy on your fixed odds." What? Are you mad? Field prep is far superior to feed and frenzy. Why do you need a quicker reload? Field prep gives you the quicker reload, and it gives you nearly. It gives you so much ammo, you can spam it. Field prep stacks with scavenger. I feel as if people who run, who run feeding frenzy do not have a one understanding of field prep. Listen, there's a couple of subscribers as well talking to me. Should I put field prep on it? Uh, should I put feeding frenzy on it? Definitely not. You want field prep on it. It's such a valuable machine gun. Literally the best solar machine gun in the game apart from like Xenophage. Focus the snipers and the and the majors, right? Then we go to middle, start killing the sounds in middle. This will spawn in the next wave. Make sure snipers are killed before this wave, lest they're going to give you problems because there's goblins that can make uh, targets immune, etc. We'll get a blind over far uh, of that far side because there's a lot of goblins there, and we'll just keep getting our blinds in middle like this. This do, this isn't as dangerous as it looks, and I've got Karnstein armlets on to use as well. If things go, um, mess up, there's no need to run Dawn Chorus right now. How you know the supercharged exotic? There's no need to run that. There's no need to really run any exotic apart from Cancelling Armors. I don't see why you would use anything else. Like for this bit, we're clearing ads. There's there's no need. We may use our super once, so you could swap quickly to Dawn Chorus and swap back. I have no problem with that. But other than that, you're spamming machine gun. Your goal is to spam machine gun only. You need to get through this. Like, you can use a bit of Sunshot here and there, but focus more so the machine gun. It will actually kill ads quicker than Sunshot, believe it or not. And it's just the stun effect that you get off, off the machine gun as well. This little ambush room makes sure you keep getting your blinds in, going with the machine gun. Like I said, spam the machine gun ammo, don't worry, because you're going to be able to put a banner in at the boss fight. Always crouch to reload. See the reload? Look at the reload. Did you see how quickly that was with field prep? And no kill is required for that quick reload. Feed and Frenzy isn't good unless you get times five Feed and Frenzy, which is okay when you're doing that. But when you've done with the room and you want to do a quick reload, that ain't that ain't working for you. And you don't get as much ammo. Watch all the top GM players. They're all using fixed odds with field prep, and there's for good reason. So... That, I think I've said enough about the fixed odds field prep, so make sure that when you're crafting it, you don't make that mistake. We'll use a super to clear out room two for the snipers. You, your, your super is to clear out the knights and the snipers. That is it, right? Because it just makes it so that this room's cleared quickly. You need as much time as possible at the boss fight because for players with less skill, you're going to need more time there. I, I foresee people having difficulty on the solar flawless, even on a warlock. Just because of how they've changed the boss fight and flinch 
Flinch is a huge problem on console. Aim assist a huge problem on, on console. Uh, that's not just me lying. That is an actual fact. Kill two snipers and then Icarus dash over the phalanxes. Because you need to kill them anyways, I think. And just kill them from a distance. Kill these phalanxes first. And then we're going to go on a restoration kill chain when we go out there. So make sure you do that little bit. Re again, don't worry about ammo so much. Maybe go in with a blind every now and then. It'll stop the sirens from teleporting. So that's why I went with the blind and GL for you. Is because I've, I, you could have went with a sniper for more DPS. But I don't think DPS is going to be your problem once things are set up. Your problem is surviving and stuff like that. So the blind and nade GL just comes in clutch for critical moments. And ultimately that's more important uh, for people. But if you're really that confident, then run Supremacy in your kinetic slot. That will be the best version of Sniper to use with kinetic tremors. So, or succession, I suppose. So we'll get a blind here. This is the boss room, but before the boss is spawning, we've got to kill all these enemies. So, we're, again, look at our ammo. We've literally spammed LMG constant, and we've still got over half ammunition left. Just goes to show how strong it is, but we're going to... <clears throat> Keep blinding, getting our kills, and this is where we're going to swap shortly. This particular run was a little scrappy at the boss. Getting to the boss was fine. Uh, I would so I would say near the once we got to like boss two of the VIP got a little scrappy. Um, so this run could have been quicker. There's no doubt about it. But the strategy is foolproof, and you should do it. I've actually got footage of me. Getting to the final boss, right? The 20 minutes, the 20 minutes uh, runs out, but you can still kill a boss and get loot. I think, because the timer just sticks on zero. I don't know if it's bugged. If anyone else has experienced, let us know. But I just had a run before this. The bot, the time went to zero, and I didn't go to orbit. So we messed up here. But, well, we didn't mess up. It was the boss's fight. Boss's fault. We wanted to take out all three boxes in middle to spawn in all three bosses. Because obviously now I know that you can. On the previous video, I didn't know if you could do that, but you can. So you, we needed to take out all three boxes. We haven't. We've only took out two. So that's because that stupid taken boss spawned on top of us as I was about to shoot it. So we use a super. Get a super out. Pick a boss. Generally, you want to pick the knight with the taken walls to use a super on, though. Not the Centurion, because the Centurion's not much of a problem. It's the Taken Knight. Um, but that's just how that works. Now we're going to put on Stag, and I'm going to show you the power of Stag. Right? So this Taken Knight's going to be the one that pushes you. The Centurion will stay back, and the Solar Knight will stay back. But the Taken Knight guy, this guy, will be annoying to you. So you're going to get flinched, right, out of your crits, because you, now we swapped to Polaris Lance. So Polaris Lance is now going to give us our ignition damage. You're going to sacrifice Dawn Chorus Scorch, but you're going to get way more healing risk round the corner. Now, I made a build video. Look at that, nearly departed. I made a build video the other day, and one or two of you said, Stag is shit. It's a waste of an exotic slot. What? Are you joking? You don't know the game, man. It, of course it is. Look at this gameplay. Right, we're in it. We're backed up into a situation where we need crit damage. We need to sustain damage round the corner. St any, any time when you need to fight round a corner like this, is it's gold. It's worth its weight. Right, when we're getting unlucky here with flinch and stuff like that, we've got another rift if we need to pop it, which I'm gonna have to. So look, start gameplay showcase, showing you that yes it is a good exotic i think people look at the portion of when you die you create a rift on death and they think oh well that's good for pvp and they like they sort of forget that oh it's infinite healing rifts in pve that's obviously going to be good especially when you keep getting critically wounded like this i could have dawn chorus on but i would keep getting flinched out of damage right so to aid that um i had this on instead which it worked out it worked out good for me. I'm gonna take out these snipers while I have chance. Try and de aggro ads as well. The way to de aggro them is to go to the other exit of the cave. So do you see how they were de aggroed and focused on the other exit? 
rather than this exit. They're now focused on me, but that's fine. We'll use a bit of LMG on this on this stupid Taker Knight because he is annoying me. We're going to use a super on him. Remember, he's the worst VIP target to deal with. Solar Knight and Centurion are easy. Take and wall guy, difficult. We've nearly got super. We're going to swap to Dawn Chorus in a minute. Make sure that you do that, lest you will lose so much damage. And your, your super will be pitiful. So be careful of that. Make sure you keep doing your search. Uh, not your search switches, but your loadout switches. There's no equipment locked out on. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So you don't have to be honed in on one build. We're actually, what I'm actually doing here is, is using the best of... The best aspects of free exotics combined. Stag, Karnstein, Dawn Chorus. Dawn Chorus DPS. Stag for mobile rifts round corners. Karnstein armlets for mobile restoration. I've just said it to you in that sentence. Quote me, because that's exactly how it is. Because you're going to see now an aspect of Karnstein armlets that's really good for wizard phase. Well, when we get to that bit. Uh, we need to get the third box. We've lost time because of this, right? But it is my first solo flawless clear. I'll make sure that doesn't happen on the next one. We've actually lost time. I would say two minutes lost because of that. Because the boss wasn't spawned in. That's fine, though, because on the upside of... On the up, upshot of that, the room's less busy. It's just minotaurs out there. I didn't realise. I thought there was more ads out there, but there isn't. So what must be happening is for each enemy type associated with each VIP boss, they despawn when the VIP boss, is, VIP boss is killed, I think. That's what looks to be happening. Either that or I've just done really good ad clear. Wizards are attached to, to the Solar Knight. Captains, at, captains are attached to the Taken Wall guy. And snipers are attached to the Centurion, I think. It's kind of difficult to remember all this all, all in one go. We're pushing up a bit because there's not many ads. There's a taken wizard that's going to push us in a minute. I'm going to swap to Stag. I've got Sunshot on still. That's fine. I'll just switch to Polaris. We'll get a blind here. I knew that wizard was pushing. So use the cover that's provided. They buffed this room. Even though they... Well, no, they've nerfed it because you can't stand at the back of the map anymore. But they've also give us cover to work in mid so it's a workable area now with map rotation so you need to really pay attention to when Bungie adds cover to a arena that means they're wanting you to do something in this case it's map rotation and you end up using it for the final boss look at the ignition stun there ignition stun fantastic we now get to the final boss what how many have we got left five something like that we'll get a blind on this wizard just less than five we'll get a blind on the wizard there's two wizards to kill so kill he instantly burst the right wizard down then loop around all the pieces of cover on the map get a blind on the second wizard and then kill with machine gun do it exactly like that and this will be no problem to you we then swap to dawn chorus because no need for stag anymore and we're we're, we're we're waiting on our melee we can get melee ability energy via Dawn Chorus and Polaris Lance, which is exactly what I'm doing. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and maximise my damage. I don't know how much damage I'm gonna do to him, so I need to make sure I've got my melee. I've just got it now. So Celestial Fire, dead important. Make sure you get it back. Um, I'm now waiting for full HP. I'm gonna debuff with Celestial Fire and then Super. Right, this will do massive. This will do as a, a third, uh, a first. The first phase of damage, because his health split in half, it'll it'll do that basically. Thrall start to spawn in once you've damaged him. They are infinite. They are not linked to any wizard. It's just infinite Thrall now. So this is good for ammo purposes, I suppose, but it doesn't matter because the legwork's now going to be done by Polaris. The reason why we're not really using machine gun that much is because Polaris is going to give us more super energy with the ignitions. It's going to allow me to get a super for phase two. Whilst also doing good stun ignition damage. With three minutes, we need to hurry up and get a super. We haven't even got one. So we're going to map rotate. There's loads of blights. You don't need to take any of the blights apart from the back blight. I recommend you take down the back blight because the boss will sit in that blight if you don't. Meaning that you can't finish him off before 20 minutes is finished. So, same thing. Get can't stay in armlets. Mobile restoration going. We've swapped to that with the healing aid, the melee kills on the... 
on the Thrall, and we're just going to blind Wizards. We're going to use the Blades as cover. The, the boss can't hit me because of the Blades, so this is perfect. But we need to take down the back blight at the very least to make the boss damageable on phase 2. This is very important. But look at how good this is. I can stand in the blight, take tick, ba tick damage, melee the thrall for health regen and take down the blight comfortably. That's what's so good about this. So like I say, I, I'm happy with how the runners showcased each build. Karnstein, Stag, Don Chorus. And each one of them has a little roll. Actually, sorry, you need to take down this blight as well because this blight's in your way. So there's two blights you need to de deal with. Then you're going to go back in this cave. It is better on right-hand side cave than left. I've tested it. Left just seems to be bad. I don't know why, it just is. So we're going to swap back to Stag. We don't need the... Um, uh, just in case these Thrall push, but we're going to try and crouch and de-aggro the Thrall while doing damage. We're not doing a good job of that because the Thrall is still coming, but eventually they, they will stop. It's all about positioning the boss. So it, Our positioning affects the boss's positioning. So look how he's rotating all the way around to a perfect. Why is he so dumb to stand in front of a cave? It's actually the opposite of what D1 was. We're shooting out of a cave to kill a boss rather than in a cave to get loot. Look at the ignition damage we're doing here. Really good. I know we haven't got Dawn Chorus on, but DPS isn't the problem at the minute. What's the problem is getting our super to make sure we finish the boss off. It will guarantee it. But to be honest, if we'd lined up enough crits, we would have killed him anyways. But the super is a fail safe. And it depends on your run. You might have more time left or less time than me. This run was sloppy at the boss, but really optimized in terms of getting to the boss. But I don't feel like I want to redo it, because if I was to redo the run, it, it wouldn't really show much uh, much else, apart from maybe slight more optimizations of enemy spawns and doing things that maybe I didn't need to do. But overall, it's a so false legend. Here you go. That was the run on this. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.